This is episode 27, Phrases and Their Functions. So in the last section we looked at the different word classes and how to identify them. And I have them here, I'm sure you'll recognise the paper. These word classes were the noun, verb, including the auxiliary verb and the lexical verb, the adjective, the adverb, the determiner, the pronoun, preposition, conjunction and interjection. And many of these had some equivalent phrasal classes. So the noun had the phrasal class of the noun phrase, the verb had the verb phrase, the adjective had the adjective phrase, the adverb had the adverb phrase, and the preposition over here had the prepositional phrase. And we understood what they were, but today, rather than looking at them individually, I'm going to look at phrases in general and what they are. So let's do that. What is a phrase? Well, a phrase is a group of words that have a gra grammatical relationship to each other. So I'll write that down. So let's check that then. A phrase is a group of words that have a grammatical relationship to each other. Okay, so that means that a noun phrase is a group of words all pointing to the noun, like the thick textbook. Textbook is the noun, thick is describing the textbook, and the is defining the textbook. So that's a noun phrase. An adjective phrase is a group of words with an adjective at its head, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I think that you can actually very naturally break the sentences down into their phrases. So I'll give you an example and if you like you can pause the video here and have a go at breaking them down into their phrase classes and then I'll uh, go through them. Okay, so here we go. The sentence is, the young girl had never visited the oldest and biggest watermelon in Australia before. So can you break this down? into the different phrases and label their phrasal class. Have a go. Now I'm going to do it for you now. So I have the young girl and that's a noun phrase. Had never visited and that's my verb phrase which includes the auxiliary verb, the lexical verb and the adverb. Now I also have oldest and biggest here as an adjective phrase and that comes within a bigger noun phrase including the and watermelon. So that's a noun phrase that comes around the adjective phrase. We have in Australia which is a prepositional phrase and then of course here we have an adverb all by itself which is of course an adverb phrase because don't forget that a phrase can include uh, one word or more which all point to the head word. So that's an adverb or an adverb phrase, which is an adverb. So this is how I broke it all up into its phrases and labeled them. And if you manage to do that too, then you're doing pretty well, I think. All right, so each of the phrases in this sentence also have a function. And the function of a phrase is different to its phrasal category. The function of the phrases in the sentence help us to figure out what the sentence means. So in this sentence, for example, we know that we are talking about the young girl and we are talking about her and her experiences or lack thereof. Okay, so that we know this because of the function. Now, the grammatical labels for these different functions are the following. We have the subject. There is also the verb. I'm going to do the verb in green because, you know, it moves and goes. Now, of course, the verb is something that we also see as a word class as well. So that can be a bit confusing, can't it? So a verb is both a function and a class, but it's the only one that shares um, it in both, in both sections, both the form and the function. Okay, we also have an object. And this object can be split into two types of objects. We have the indirect or the direct object, we'll say first and then we have the indirect object. 
Okay, and both of them are objects, just have a different function. Okay, after the object, we also have the complement. And this complement also has two types. It has the subject complement and the object complement. So I'll just write those down. And finally, we have the adverbial. Now, English relies on word order to determine the different functions within the sentence, but this was not always the case. A long time ago, when English was Old English, word order was not so important in a sentence to determine meaning because each word had its own affix that told us whether the word was the subject or the recipient of an action and so on. But over time, we dropped these inflections and came to rely more on word order. Now, there are modern languages such as Japanese, as well as ancient languages such as Latin, where word order is not important for meaning due to their own system of particles or inflections. There are also languages that do rely on word order, but a different word order to English. So the word order we use in English is what we call subject, verb, object. So let's write that down. We've got the subject, then comes the verb, and then comes the object, if there is one. English is actually very subject dependent, so much so that we have made up words to go into the subject position when we don't have an actual subject to use. And this means that words in our sentence don't always have to have meaning if the purpose is merely to fulfill a function. But I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit here and we will look at that in more depth a little bit down the track. So without getting further sidetracked, the next few videos are going to look at each function of the sentence mentioned above one by one, starting of course with the subject. Now, many of the sentence examples I will be using come from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. So until then, thanks for watching The Language Code.